Diving in the water and that's what is grounded theory approach. How you might wonder. The very simple logic is you are actually doing the research. You are actually finding the basics of the research. And that's what is the grounded theory approach. You are not dependent on any other source. You are not collecting your data from any other source. It is what is generated through your experience and then you create a theory out of it. And this is what is a grounded theory approach. This was laid down by Glosser and Strauss in 1967 and is one of the most systematic methodologies being used in social sciences as of now. And it's also based on a kind of inductive approach. We'll understand in a while how. So let's take a very simple example. I need to find out a model how to become a university topper. Now this is something that is my research topic and I want to find out. So what would I do? My first way of collecting the data would be what? Would be interviewing the people who have actually uh, topped in the universities and the colleges and I would be taking students from different streams, it could be art, science, humanities and so on. So under this approach, what I starting, what I do in the starting is a theoretical sampling. That means I pick out the right people whom I would interview. Obviously, those who were able to secure a significantly good grade would be the people I would select for the uh, research here. So that is a theoretical sampling. I sample out people scoring or students scoring A plus or A and above and that's a theoretical sample. Once you have a theoretical sample, you understand the core phenomena. So you go to each of those students and ask what is the process, how did you secure uh, and how did you ultimately turn to be a university topper for example and that is what? That is a core phenomena that you are understanding the process, the process behind the success. The next important step is the causal connections. That means what influenced this process. So what was the factor behind you being a topper as simple as that. So what influenced the process is the causal condition. Now this could be let's say someone in your family did so or you have a senior who guided you or whatsoever. So from different respondents you would have different answers that would come and that is a causal condition. The next important thing is the strategy. Now strategy says what was the action that you actually adopted? What was the process that you actually adopted and what, like how long did you study, what hours did you study, which topics did you emphasize. So that is a strategy. And finally, you would focus on what? Definitely the consequences and the outcomes of those strategies, how well you were able to score, which subjects you were able to score much higher as compared to other subjects. So that's the outcome of the strategy. So this is the very basic understanding of the fundamental process. Now, once you have this process, what you do is you analyze the data. I have the data being collected from all the students, all the department toppers. And now I'm understanding how a person actually turned out to be a university topper. So what kind of data analysis I would do? First of all, I'll create a category and this is known as open coding. I would read the data and find the various categories that are there. Now these categories could be based on uh, let's say the performance in the school, based on the college performance, based on uh, the uh, good ability to have uh, interaction, so good at interview. So there could be various categories I could demarcate based on the data that I collected. Now be very careful, I am emphasizing this again and again based on the data that you collected. Okay, So based on the data that you collected, you have certain categories that are defined and that is open coding. Now what is another important thing is the constant comparison. That means I would create a new category only and only if all my existing categories cannot have that criteria. So let's say of the 20, 50, 100 samples that I did, 
one of the student was from a very backward region and did not had ample means to study yet he was a university topper but that was a category of uh, let's say poverty we could say which was not taken into account in my open coding and therefore here i would have to create a new category because i have a few samples that are present in this uh, se section which is not being categorized as a different category so this is what is constant comparison we create a new category if the existing data does not fit into the categories that we made and finally we have a memoing what is memoing memoing simply means how these categories can explain the process of being a topper and that is the process of memoing now finally we have an approach now what is this approach with the open coding we move to axial coding now axial coding what does it mean axial coding means that you see the various codes and various memos and you try to relate it so rather than having just one criteria i have two different criteria that i am trying to connect and this is what is known as the axial coding further beyond axial coding is what beyond axial coding is yet interesting which is selective coding and selective coding implies that now i am trying to explain the theory with the core processes that are there so all the parameters that i have taken into account in the axial coding i am trying to relate all those together and i am trying to explain the process and this is what is known as selective coding and finally the most important of that is the discriminant sampling now discriminant sampling implies that i have done my research at this section this university now i move on to a new university university all together a new university and i need to recruit a this new set of people or i need to find out uh, the new set of people who would be the toppers in that university so what i do is i have the same set of questions or the new set of questions that could be experimented with the new set of uh, population that is there and that is what is discriminant sampling so i need to understand whether the same set of questions can be applied or new set of question needs to be devised and testing and verifying the validity of it is very very important so under grounded theory approach we have the open coding axial coding and selective coding that comes very important we start with theoretical sampling and we come on to discriminant sampling so those are some of the most important things that you need to remember under a grounded theory approach most common questions from grounded theory would be which of the following is part of grounded theory so whether memoing is part of it constant comparison is part of it open coding axial coding selective coding is part of it so what we have discussed today all those terms you need to understand that they are part of your grounded theory approach and grounded theory is something that you actually do so again the same example it's like diving into a swimming pool it's something that is being done by you yourself that you are diving into a pool and similarly you are doing the research first handedly so it's kind of your experiences that are very very important under this study we would be covering many more interesting research aptitude topics stay tuned stay subscribed have a wonderful day ahead